My friends, welcome to the Word Exposed. Join me in contemplating the Lord present in the Holy Scriptures today, the 13th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Today's Gospel reminds us of two important things. First, the consequences that follow the choices we made. Jesus tells us, if you choose to follow me, be ready to carry your cross. Yet, we have a reason to be hopeful, brothers and sisters. Whoever loses his or her life for Jesus' sake will find it. The other thing is this. Generosity and hospitality are essential in our lives as Christians. The Lord tells us, Whoever receives you receives me. Whoever receives me receives the Father. Let us not close our doors to one another. Let us not close our doors to the poor and the persecuted. According to Jesus, the Holy Spirit will not invent new truth. The Holy Spirit will lead us to the truth that Jesus has already taught. When you have the Holy Spirit, you can speak and explore different languages to address people of different needs. Barriers and boundaries of discrimination Division and injustice should disappear. The diversity of the gifts should not be a hindrance to the strengthening of the church. God chooses all. A reading from the second book of Kings. One day, Elisha came to Shunem, where there was a woman of influence who urged him to dine with her. Afterward, whenever he passed by, he used to stop there to dine. So she said to her husband, I know that Elisha is a holy man of God. Since he visits us often, let us arrange a little room on the roof and furnish it for him with a bed, table, chair, and lamp so that when he comes to us, he can stay there. Some time later, Elisha arrived and stayed in the room overnight. Later, Elisha asked, Can something be done for her? His servant, Gehazi, answered, Yes. She has no son, and her husband is getting on in years. Elisha said, Call her. When the woman had been called and stood at the door, Elisha promised, This time next year, you will be fondling a baby son. The Word of the Lord Our first reading for this Sunday is taken from the second book of Kings. Let us reflect on gratitude. Gratitude which is manifested in selflessness, a giving of self, losing myself as an act of gratitude. Very often, we associate gratitude with the words, thank you, thank you, thank you, or the memory of the good thing that someone has done to us. They're all good, but our readings for today bring us to a deeper level of gratitude. Can you lose yourself generously, hospitably? Elisha was known to be a holy man, a man of God, and he frequented the house of a woman of influence. This woman of influence knew that this man who would pass by their city, who would even ask to stay in her house, was a man of God. A man who had given himself totally to the service of God, to mission. This thing was evident to the woman. And seeing this, how Elisha had responded to God's calling with all of himself, 
this woman asked her husband if they could let go of a space in their house so that when this man of God who has given all would come again, he could stay in their house. He could enjoy a bed with a table, with a chair, and a lamp. We could probably tell that woman, why waste that space in your house for a total stranger? Why not make use of that space for your own needs? But look at the logic of this woman. This is a holy man of God. This person has given everything to God as an act of gratitude to Him. Can I not lose a bit of myself, a bit of space in my house? Look at how this gratitude of the woman was translated in terms of readiness to lose something, even if it was a small space in her house. But gratitude, not just in words, but gratitude shown as willingness to lose something of myself, lose something of what is valuable to me, because that is the best way to give recognition to a holy person, to someone who has given everything of himself to God. And now it was the turn of Elisha, seeing the goodness of this woman and being driven by gratitude he asked his assistant, what does, this, what does this woman need? And he said, oh, a son, a child. They don't have a child. And Elisha, speaking in the name of God, promised, by this time next year, you will have a baby son. Gratitude in terms of losing myself Oh, don't worry, you gain more than what you lose. She lost a bit of space in her house, but she gained a son. Let gratitude be manifested in selfless giving and generosity. It has been a while now since we started this program in 2008. From day one, you have been with us, our dear friends, assisting us with open hands. We are inviting you once again to be our partners in this ministry. Following the mandate of the Lord to bring the good news to all, we can continue to broadcast and reach more people with your support, bringing the good news to them through television and the internet. Friends, your offering would be very much appreciated. Thank you. May the Lord reward you a hundredfold. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as dead to sin, 
and living for God in Christ Jesus. The Word of the Lord. Our second reading for this Sunday is taken from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. We have been reflecting on gratitude manifested in selfless giving, letting go, giving of myself or what I possess as an act of thanksgiving. In the first reading, this woman of influence was so grateful to Elisha. Elisha, the son of the, the good man, the holy man of God, the prophet who has given himself totally to mission. And this woman, out of gratitude to him, let go of a space in her house so that Elisha could have her bed, could have a table, could have a chair, could have a lamp. It did not matter to her losing something precious to her. It was nothing if you are grateful to someone who has been doing greater things. And Elisha, as an act of gratitude, promised that she would have a baby son. In the second reading, St. Paul reminds us, all of us baptized, that Jesus died died for all of us. He did not give us something. He did not just do anything. He gave everything. He died. He offered His life as a gift for us. And while we give gifts, and somehow what dies is, oh, my wallet, some deduction to the amount of money that I used to have, those little dimes. But Jesus, when He decided to give us a gift, it was the totality of who He was. He died for us. Total gift of self. But then God raised Him to life. And His rising from the dead is also for us, both in death and in His resurrection, it was always for us. Whether in pain and sorrow or in victory and glory, it was always Him for us. What do we fear? How do we respond? How do we give thanks? What is the proper act of gratitude to someone who has given everything so that we might live? And He offers to us baptism so that we could share in that new life He has won for us. St. Paul proposes something. Then consider yourselves dead to sin and alive for God. That was what Jesus did for you. Could you do the same for Him? Not as an obligation, but as an act of gratitude. An act of love to someone, for someone who has loved us more than we could ever love Him back. Can we let go of sin? Could we let go of old lifestyle as an act of gratitude for Him who has given His whole life for all of us? This is gratitude, responding in freedom to the one who has loved us. Proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to Matthew Jesus said to his apostles, Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me 
is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Whoever receives you receives me, and whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. Whoever receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and whoever receives a righteous man because he is a righteous man will receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever gives only a cup of cold water to one of these little ones to drink because the little one is a disciple, Amen, I say to you, he will surely not lose his reward. The Gospel of the Lord. Our Gospel passage for this Sunday is taken from the Gospel according to St. Matthew. We have been reflecting on gratitude. Gratitude that allows us to be selfless, to be more generous, not out of obligation, but because of this deep, this profound thanksgiving towards someone. In the first reading, this woman of influence whom Elisha had met and whose house he, as the prophet of God, had frequented was you know, so free. She was ready to give up a portion of her house so that this man of God, this holy man, could have a bed, a table, a chair, and a lamp every time he came for a visit. Why would this woman let go of such valuable space? Well, as an act of gratitude, as an act of thanksgiving and recognition of the goodness and the holiness and the selflessness of Elisha. Gratitude made her selfless too. In the second reading, St. Paul reminds the Romans that Jesus died so that we might live. He did not give us anything. He gave us himself, his life. He died so that we would die to sin. And his victory was not for her himself, but for all of us, so that we might have new life. How? How do we respond in gratitude to this person, Jesus, who has loved us so? He says, then, consider yourself dead to sin and alive for God. That's the fitting act of gratitude. In the gospel, the first part seems to be harsh. Jesus tells us that if you do not hate your father, mother, uh, brothers, sisters, your whole family, you are not worthy of him. If you do not take up his cross, our cross, then we are not worthy of him. Wow, quite harsh. But when you look at the total event, no. He himself took up his cross for us. He himself denied himself for us. He left home. He had nowhere to lay his head for us. When we look at some of the harsh, seemingly harsh teachings of Jesus, for him, for us to follow him, for us to be worthy of him, before reacting, let us first look at what he had done for us. And maybe rem remembering the great love that he has for us, denying himself, leaving everything, self-emptying, dying for us, then we know it's little, it's little, for us to let go of ourselves, 
for Him, for Him who has loved us most. Giving of ourselves to Jesus becomes a big burden if we do not first recall what He had done for us. Doing something for Jesus in the spirit of obligation, in the spirit of complying with the law or commandment, really makes it a bit tedious. It brings us uh, some sort of heaviness. But when we do it in the spirit of gratitude, as an act of thanksgiving, then yes, there is pain, but there is freedom. I can let go because I'm doing this for someone who has given up more than what I could possibly give up. He gave up everything for me. And actually, if I give up something precious for Him so that I become worthy of Him, I gain, I gain more. The second part of the gospel tells us that if we are a disciple of Christ, whoever shows us even a bit of kindness because we are a disciple of Christ will be rewarded. Look at that. And that is also our reward, that people are blessed doing good things to us, not because we deserve it, but because they see how we follow the Lord. Our gratitude to the Lord in terms of generous and selfless service motivates other people to be generous also to God. It is love upon love, grace upon grace, Jesus' generosity to us generating a response of grateful generosity from us. And hopefully people seeing that will be motivated to be generous, not only to us, but to God. Generosity begets generosity. Now, my brothers and sisters, it is uh, wonderful for people like me. No, we are priests, we are supposed to be leaders, but uh, when we see the generosity of other people, then I am put to shame. <laughs> I am really put to shame. I could not believe that some people could be as generous as they are. And for no other reason than really gratitude. Not obligation, but gratitude. A few years ago, as a preparation for the Feast of the Traslacion, you know, the big feast on the 9th of January of the Black Nazarene, we received the report that there might be an attack during the procession to disrupt the procession. Call it terrorism, call it oh, some banditry, whatever. But the intelligence report reached us. There might be a commotion that might cost lives. So we were being asked to consider options, etc. There was a meeting of people who were involved in the procession, the traslation. And I telephoned to them and I shared with them the report, the intelligence report. I asked one of the leaders, I asked him, can you secure the uh, safety of the devotees? He said, we will try our best. I said, are you not afraid? Would you consider shortening the route of the procession? or maybe well, even making it uh, simple just around the vicinity of the church. He said, but why would, be, why would we be afraid? Jesus died for us. He carried the cross for us. 
And if we need to die for Him during this procession, we will do it. We are ready for it. I called the military person who gave the information. I said, you cannot stop the procession. People out of gratitude are willing to let go of their lives for the Jesus who had first died for them. The word has been exposed. Let us now fulfill it. It has been a while now since we started this program in 2008. From day one, you have been with us, our dear friends, assisting us with open hands. We are inviting you once again to be our partners in this ministry. Following the mandate of the Lord to bring the good news to all, we can continue to broadcast and reach more people with your support, bringing the good news to them through television and the internet. Friends, your offering would be very much appreciated. Thank you. May the Lord reward you a hundredfold. Friends, the readings today bring hospitality to our attention. Let us reflect on it in this episode. Hospitality is our generous reception of other people, especially strangers. It comes from a friendly disposition towards them. In the Old Testament, we see how hospitality brought favors from God. Being hospitable to the three strangers who visited his tent, Abraham was granted a son, Isaac. But we also see how lack of hospitality could lead to destruction. The people of Sodom and Gomorrah saw Lot received visitors in his home, and due to lust, they wanted to touch and exploit them. They did not listen to Lot, who pleaded with them to spare his visitors. They were not hospitable. Here we learn that being hospitable involves our self-understanding, our self-image. Abraham wanted to serve his visitors. I am your servant, he said. Hospitality is service rendered to the other. It was clear to Lot that his visitors were under his care and protection. Hospitality is my responsibility as protector to keep the other safe. We could also look into some events in the New Testament. The people of Jerusalem received Jesus well, even singing, Hosanna, Son of David. How hospitable, welcoming a visitor with jubilation. We are happy to be with you. But in the end, when Pilate presented Jesus and Barabbas to the crowd, what was their cry? Crucify him, crucify Jesus. They were no longer happy to be with him. Friends, hospitality requires commitment. I would like to direct your attention to the pressing concerns today. There are so many refugees, so many evacuees, so many displaced people. How do we fare in this part? Do we fear them? Do we accept them into our fold? Do we commit to serve them and to keep them safe? Or do we make a list of services we rendered and the goods they consumed so we can charge them later on? Do we forget our commitment to them in times of difficulty and inconvenience? In carrying out our hospitality to the poor and those who are persecuted, we can learn also from Mary of Bethany. 
Sure, she dropped everything she was doing because it was the master who was before her. But I hope we realize that this event teaches us a vital element of hospitality, the willingness to listen to the other. It is not enough to simply give them food, shelter, and clothing in a mechanical way. We must also listen to them and their stories. I learned from my encounters with refugees, these people who were dispossessed of their belongings and were displaced from their homes, their cries for justice and peace are not listened to. Nobody bothered to look after them. They are made to feel that they do not belong. Friends, may I invite you to take part in the efforts of governments and the church in attending to refugees and evacuees who can only count on our hospitality. Somehow they belong to us because our Lord and Master was once a refugee himself. A good act we do to them is a good act we do to God who has always been good to us. Here are some points for your reflection. The first point is, do I value the great love of Jesus for me? Pinahahalagahan ko ba ang napakalaking pag-ibig ni Jesus para sa akin? The second point is, what prevent me from being generous to Jesus and to others? Ano ang humahad lang para ako'y maging bukas palad kay Jesus at sa ibang tao? O God, you created everything through your word. As we contemplate you in the scriptures proclaimed and heard today, renew us as your children and as brothers and sisters to one another. Amen. My friends, thank you for joining me this morning. May the Lord present in the scriptures make your heart burn for love of Him and move you to love others. Until next Sunday, only here on The Word Exposed. Bye, Bye. Bye.